be at the Pascal Congress. It's been uh, so far a great conference. So still, thank you to be here. So let's talk about develop front end and back end in Pascal, past, present, and future. We'll talk about uh, the past quite fastly. Then we talk about the present, which is our uh, all of us are involved. And then we talk with a very opinionated section, <laughs> like Sergio says, about the future. I am Daniele Teti. I am the CEO and CTO of B10 Professional, which is a, a high-level technology uh, company based in Italy, which works uh, for customers of all over the world. And uh, I'm also the CTO of Delphi Studio, which is a Spanish company based in Valencia. Uh, this is some of the book I, I wrote. This is the last one. The last one is the Delphi MVC framework, the official guide. And uh, what we'll talk about. What is web development, just to start? How Pascal has been used in the classic, let's say, now it's classic web development, and then some evolutions and revolutions, and then we will talk about Pascal today and Pascal in the future. So what is web development? Web development, with a big dose of uh, creativity, is the development for the web. Hmm? We usually refer to the web front-end and web back-end to identify the client and the server of a web system. Uh, the back-end contains uh, the business logic, data access, all the complexity of the system based on the business logic and what all goes around the data, while the front-end presents data to the users, receives inputs, and uh, uh, the, must be nice to see or uh, must, uh, must provide a good UX for the user. So uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, there is a user with a client, let's say a browser, and can be connected to some sort of network, could be also the loopback uh, in localhost. So the client, when you write www.something.com, issue an HTTP request, which reach finally a server, which does something. We don't know what the server is really doing. It may be just picking a static file, some JavaScript file, CSS, or just execute something, uh, some code on the backend. Maybe also reach the, the, the database. And then, when he does all his magic, bring back the HTTP response to the client. And so the client is in charge to display such response. The client could be the browser, which is the main topic we will talk today, a mobile app, desktop app, uh, IoT device, really anything. Uh, on the server side, we could have dynamic pages, or a RESTful API, or a JSON RPC, or XML RPC API, or just static file. This is the front end, and this is the back end. So when we talk about developing here and there, we are talking about this stuff. Hmm? OK. Classic web, the beginning. In the early days, web was composed only by static content. That's it, files. Hmm? However, serving static contents was not enough. So developers started to uh, thinking about how to create dynamic content, maybe data-driven. Hmm? And this has been the start for a long journey. In the 1993, the National Center for Sub Supercomputing Application, CSA, uh, brought their specification for just calling the executable from Condon line with a specific interface and then get the response back. The CGI was born. Uh, CCI stands for Common Gateway Interface and is a standard defining how external programs can read and provide information to web servers. CGI, CGI is just uh, 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 a mechanism to web server to exchange data with other software. CGI is one of the oldest components of the internet infrastructure, but it is, is, uh, it is still widely used today despite having been technically superseded by newer alternatives, but CGI is universally, uh, has been universally adopted and is really uh, available everywhere. 
So while web server software was traditionally limited to serving static web page, CGI script enabled the production of dynamic responses. So what about Pascal? We, in this talk, we try to follow the technology and what Pascal has to offer in that time frame. Hmm? Uh, a CGI executable is a normal console executable program. At the, at the, in the past and still today. So th this program has just to exchange data with the external world in a specific way. This specific way is the common gateway interface. So to execute a CGI, pro a CGI program, you must use an HTTP server which support for CGI. One of the best suited for such uh, work is HTTPD from Apache. What about CGI in Pascal? That's it. Wow. Yes, it is so simple. Even in the beginning of the dynamic web, Pascal was able to be used for the web development. It is nothing more. It is clearly a hello world, hello CGI world, but that's a correct CGI program. Okay? I don't have time, but this is the, the screenshot of this CGI. So when you write CGI program, however, you should consider using a code library or framework uh, to do the most of the work for you because there are a lot of uh, encoding, decoding, uh, reading environments, uh, reading on the standard output, reading from the standard input and so on. And this leads having libraries to lead to fewer errors and faster development. So which libraries are available today to do CGI programming in Pascal? There are a lot of them. Let's introduce some of the most popular. One of the most popular is the Delphi Web Broker. Web Broker is a technology introduced by, I think, 20, 23 years ago, more or less, uh, uh, which uh, helps to create a number of different kinds of web application, and CGI is one of them. You can just create a CGI standalone executable. What about FreePascal? FreePascal has the, the FP web package, which contains really a lot of stuff to work on the, for, the, for the web. And FP web allows to write CGI application. You just have to install, if you use Lazarus, you just have to install the web lads package in Lazarus, and you can create a CGI program. So, so all the problem of the backend development has been solved? No. CGI has been a great start with some problems. The problem with CGI was that it fired up a new process at every client request. So if you have 20 requests in parallel, 100 requests in parallel, we have 100 process that need to be started, drive with data, and then executed, and then get data back, and then destroy it. This led to a large amount of memory being used when there were many concurrent requests. CGI programs are generally executed as a child process of the server, and this means that the server must be protected from script interference, because the script could change something of the web server. It's not running in a sandbox. Hmm? So misconfiguration could give uh, the, uh, to the CGI, that could be a script or an executable software, uh, access to other resources managed by the server, such as configuration file, log files. So how to solve this problem? Fast CGI. The next version of CGI. Many of the CGI issues has been addressed by Fast CGI. Fast CGI was created to reduce the CGI overhead uh, like CGI, it could invoke an external program and return the output to the server. However, it did not need to create a new process every time. Instead, it spawned the process, but keep it running in sort of infinite loop. Hmm? Uh, this loop allowed to reuse the same process again and again. Also, the fast CGI server is, can, be, can be a different process 
uh, compared to the web server. So there are two processes, web server and the fast GGI process. So the two one are separated. So all the process, all the problem with uh, ownership, change configuration, blah, 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 has been solved. This is an example in C, which show how to use the CGI approach. Like you say, there is an infinite, more or less infinite loop that just is more like Berkeley socket. Okay, just get the information, process it, close, and start and waiting for the next the next information. Okay. So the fast CGI keeps executables in memory, and it is not mandatory to run on the same machine of the web server. This has been a, a, a leap forward. What about Pascal? In Free Pascal, with the great FP web, uh, you can write fast CGI applications as well. Uh, Nginx and Apache have a good support for fast CGI. In the Delphi world, Fast CGI is not supported by a web broker. Uh, there are some open source projects supporting Fast CGI, but no one seems widely adopted nor active supported. Currently, the most active is that one from the uh, GitHub user Calix funds. Another revolution, Web Service API. As the time goes by, the web was gaining popularity. So, major web service providers started to provide extensions API for their, their own web server that can be used to extend the web server capabilities. Microsoft, for example, provides the Internet Server Application Programming Interface, which is, stands for eISAPI, which is, in the Windows world, because it is Windows world only, uh, a DLL, a dynamic link library, loaded by the, the IIS process. In the Apache world, we have the Apache modules, which is also a DLL or a shared object in Windows loaded by HTTPD process. Such web server extensions solved a lot of CGI and fast CGI problems, so they become the standard de facto to provide extension to the web server features and can be used also to create handles handlers able to provide dynamic content at a very good speed because there is no new process, there is no uh, uh, TCP connection, there is not nothing. It's always uh, in the same process. So what about Web Server API in Pascal? Pascal's major players provides a very good support for Web Server API. Written libraries directly loadable by the web server is one of the most performant way to produce dynamic content nowadays. In the Delphi world, we have the Grid framework web broker, which can create Apache web model and ESAPI dynamic link library to use for the, um, respectively with Apache web server and internet information server. And the, the great thing about web broker is that you can switch from one to another without almost without changes your code. And this is a really a great thing uh, about the web broker. In the Free Pascal world, FP Web supports Apache module development for Windows and Linux. And uh, it doesn't provide, as far as I know, uh, ESAPI development, but provides um, a mechanism to create HTTP.sys modules. HTTP.sys is a kernel model of the Windows system, which is really, really fast and can be used to develop uh, such dynamic content for Windows. Hmm? So while Web Broker allows to create ISAPI for Windows, Free Pascal doesn't allow to create ISAPI for Windows, but permits to create HTTP.sys model. Uh, this kind of extensions has been utilized to embed interpreted language, such as ASP Classic. Now we talk about it as Classic. At the time it was ASP. Hmm? ASP stands for Active Server Page or PHP. Hmm? And uh, another revolution was about to start, the script languages era. After the CGI and the native extension era, 
for a long time, the main path to the dynamic web content generation has been provided by scripting languages. Uh, how many of you have ever written uh, a script in uh, PHP, ASP, uh, Ruby on Rails, uh, uh, client side, uh, and so on? Love them, clearly. After the CGI, this, this kind of extensions was really the, the main path to produce um, con web content generation. Hmm? Major web server in the industry started to provide low-level API able to embed a full interpreter. So, what is the difference between the CGI that has been executed, that was executed by the, uh, the system, launched by the web server and executed by OS, and this new era? Because now the interpreter is not installed in the OS but is installed and configured directly in the web server. So the interpreter must be provide such kind of binding to be loaded dynamically, to, to be executed uh, in a thread safe way, and so on. So when the server receives the page request, it loads the DLL of the shared object if uh, it hasn't done so already, and execute the code. The library then send the HTTP request back to the client that requested the page. This communication occurs in memory. So this type of application tend to be way faster than CGI. Hmm? The security problem has been resolved by using script running in a sandbox. Also, the script could be replaced easily compare with compiled CGI or fast CGI approach without recompilation. And this has been one of the greatest things of the script languages. Now it seems quite weird to, to, to provide a, a Frankenstein in the middle. So you have 10 scripts, you just update one, update two, update three, and you have 10 versions of the system from <laughs> moving, changing the first one to the last one. Oh well, this is a DevOps problem. <laughs> In this era, we are talking about more or less uh, 2000 later, backend development was primarily done using scripting language, allowing it to mix code uh, and HTTP, uh, such PHP, ASP Classic, uh, and then JSP, uh, embedded Ruby, and so on. Listen, this not all the scripts was, uh, not all the languages was dynamic and interpreted. For example, JSP takes the script and create a Java class, okay? While not required, this kind of script languages tends to be typeless and dynamic. For many years, and this, in my opinion, has been a really a, a, a bad thing, for many years, declare a variable with a specific type before you use it have been a waste of time for many web programmers which start to program only in this language. Uh, because it, there was really untyped language. Hmm? This is a simple PHP page. Don't be too much scared. But here we have, it's really bad, eh? Oh, well, uh, this is the, the code intermixed with HTML. Hmm? For a long time, the web was composed by this. And because of WordPress, a lot of web <laughs> is still composed like this. <laughs> okay, so what about Pascal server pages? Sadly, Pascal major players at the time haven't been strong enough to push a valid Pascal-based version of this intermixed page. So many Pascal developers interested in web development left the Pascal world and started to use classic ASP, PHP, Ruby on Rails, JSP, and so on. Someone remember Delphi for PHP? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, which can, it's really strange, you know? Delphi for PHP, why? Okay. <laughs> Pascal scripting today. Today there are a number of possibilities, both web-oriented and general purpose too. In Delphi we have the very great Delphi web script, which despite the name is not only for the web, 
but it's really good support. You can write more or less such kind of things in, uh, um, in Pascal. And there is also the good TMS scripter, which is uh, from TMS, uh, which is a commercial product. Uh, then for Delphi and Free Pascal, there is the Pascal script from RomObjects, and also there is the great instant FPC in the FPC world, which allows to just have a script on a Pascal file on your hard drive. Uh, it's not a, a full uh, declared Pascal file, so there is not program, there is not just start with uses, hmm? and you can just execute it. That's it without compilation, and so on. It is compiled, however, without clear phase compilation linking and so on. Another revolution just around the corner. So far, the contents were still generated and produced on the server. So all these changes just happened on the server. The client was still the same. Hmm? Server code generates HTML intermixed with data. And at any round trips, carries formatting tag and data, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There was a lot, a lot of useless network traffic, and the user was forced to navigate to another page to see different contents. Today seems strange. At the time, it was normal. Client Revolution, Episode 1. In the meantime, Netscape Communicator uh, which is a discontinued uh, uh, web browser, did release a new functionality which made able to execute client code directly on the browser. That was the JavaScript's grandfather. Web Revolution, Episode 2. In the 1998, the Microsoft Outlook Web Access team developed something that uh, Great. This is, uh, um, is a concept uh, that uh, today is behind the, to that today now uh, recognized as being the, the, the grandfather of the H XML HTTP request. Uh, and then it's been released in Internet Explorer 5 in March 1999, which may be the only good thing that Internet Explorer did. And uh, uh, this has been the grandfather of the fundamental part of the today web, Ajax. How this new kid in town work works? There is still the browser that now has JavaScript code running in it. This JavaScript code allows to start request to a web server without changing the browser URL. It's a background call. It's just like if you have a form in Delphi, click a button, start a thread, and do some request to somewhere. The same approach. OK. Start a thread. Hmm? This is the fundamental uh, to make the, the similarity uh, correct. Then, the web server with the new content has been delivered to the browser, and the JavaScript, still there, updates the HTML without changing the browser rule. So that the, the user can just click a button, select something, move around, and see the content updates dynamically. This has been a revolution. Hmm? Also because uh, just after the first uh, movement of this technology, the contents that uh, was being returned to the client was not fully, um, was not a complete HTML document or fragment. It has been only data. And this has been really a revolution, because you can just back and forth for data. Today, now we have all the, piece in, all the pieces uh, in, uh, corrected to describe the today landscape. Web applications are no more built by pages rendered on the server, mostly. 
UI and UI behavior is built up directly on the client using JavaScript and data coming from the server API. Now the server is not a producer of HTML pages, but just deliver, maybe deliver some static content and then just data, only API, okay? Today, after the startup, we move data, not markup. Then the browser still evolved and we reached the single page application revolution episode, I don't know, revolution something. SPA confirmed that refreshing the entire page is a thing of the past. Applications were now designed to request only the necessary content and information, usually only data, as needed to create highly interactive user experience. Hmm? If you try to navigate to, I don't know, Maps, Google Maps or Gmail, and you try to, to see the browser URL, the browser URL changes, but only in the last part. Because the last part is what is, is used to maintain the state of the page, but the page is not rendered any time you click something. Hmm? This additional logic, because you can understand that now much of the UI logic is moved on the client. It's no more on the server. Hmm? This additional logic uh, required to do all this stuff usually is done by uh, JavaScript frameworks. Another revolution, client frameworks. The application development landscape has been changing continuously over the past few years, both on the client side and as well on the server side. On the client side, we have plenty of awesome new and updated, not so awesome, <laughs> some, some, someone is awesome, something not, uh, JavaScript framework. There is a meme that we would say another week and another JavaScript framework born. And on the server side, we have new architectural approach, such, for example, single page application, microservice, uh, serverless architectures, and so on. So the, today's architecture is more or less like this. You have still the client layer, which is now a bit smarter than uh, that it was in the past, which has uh, SPA logic, which contains HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, with a lot of frameworks and so on. There is the web browser, which run somewhere. Then you have the internet, which allows the client layer to reach the server layer. On the first, uh, the first layer of the server layer, which is the, uh, the API layer, which could have the REST API or SOAP still used somewhere, SOAP API or JSON RPC API. Then, such kind of API just is a way to, to access to the business layer, which contains the real logic, what the customers pay for, the business layer, then talk with the data layer with, that should not have logic, which access directly to the storage layer, which can be an RDBMS, BMS, uh, document database, other services, anything. This is the architecture for the today web. So, in the today's scenario, where is Pascal? How Pascal can be used in the current scenario? It is still a value for the developers? It is strongly typed approach still a value? Is the available tooling good enough? Today, Pascal on the front end. Classic approach followed by some vendor is to create a sort of stateful desktop application able to render to the um, able to render the HTML and JavaScript to let uh, be used in a browser. So you have a full stack application written in Delphi for example or FPC that generates HTML and JavaScript to be shown in the browser. Then client side events are encapsulated in AJAX requests which in turn when sent to the server execute Pascal code normally, hmm? it's just another kind of request. It can be a solution for some cases, but clearly it isn't strictly Pascal on the front end. It's more a full stack Pascal application generated on the server, which produces JavaScript executable on the client. 
Um, some solution which use this approach is Uniguy, which is a commercial tool. It's a full stack web application framework for Delphi, which features a set of visual control for developing stateful web application. Um, these applications can be run and debugged directly in the Delphi IDE because it's just a Delphi application running in Delphi, which produces HTML and JavaScript. The Uniguy developers don't work directly <coughs> with HTML, JavaScript, templates, and other web technologies. And this can be a pro or a con. It is up to you. It depends. Hmm? Talking strictly about Pascal on the front end, we should start to think about uh, JavaScript uh, as the assembly for the browser. If you think that uh, JavaScript is the assembly for the browser, a transpiler, so a sort of compiler which translates one high-level language in another high-level language, hmm? a transpiler is a must to be able to do front-end development for the front-end for um, the front-end fully embracing the web development for all the other things. Entering pass to JS. Pass to JS is a transpiler, is an open source Pascal to JavaScript transpiler. It parses object Pascal and emits JavaScript. Uh, it has been developed by the Free Pascal guys. The JavaScript is currently of level ECMAScript 5, which is the most widely used and compatible uh, in the world uh, now. And uh, it can be run in a browser and also in Node.js server. Pascal to, to JS is available in five forms as a library. You can just load the DLL and then ask to do the transpiler. As a command line program, we will see a demo now. As a web server, currently transpiling Pascal to uh, JavaScript. As Node.js and as, as a program running in the browser. But the real question is, why Pascal on the front end? Let me reply to this question with another question. Why Microsoft developed the TypeScript? You know, Anders Eisberg, which is the, the ancient father of Turbo Pascal, Delphi, and so on, is the man behind TypeScript. TypeScript is a superset. How many of us uh, know what TypeScript is? OK, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript with an optional type system, structural compatibility, and a lot of other features. But this is the major two. There are differences, but one of the main reasons, because Microsoft created TypeScript, is the strongly typed system. Do you remember something? Strongly typed system? Pascal is strongly typed from day one. The first thing that Niklaus Wirth think about Pascal, hmm, let me create a language with types. And then it starts. <laughs> Potentially very well suited for big project. Because the typeless, yeah. Let's go typeless. Then you have a tons of JavaScript with some strange structure that you have to handle. Hmm? Pascal to JS is a uh, toy project with something to use just to say, hey, I have Pascal in the browser. No. Uh, for example, it is at the base of the TMS web core, like uh, Bruno says yesterday. And uh, through external class declaration, external class definition, the compiler can use JavaScript classes directly and can also binding to the environment API. So when you develop for the browser, you have a global object which is called Windows, which allows you to access uh, to all the stuff that normally a, a, a Windows object provides in a browser. When you develop for the Node.js server, you have all the environment related to Node.js, but it's statically taped, typed. All classes available in the JavaScript runtime and in the browser are available through import units, 
which is comparable to the Windows or Unix units for the native compiler. If you think about the binding to uh, libc or kernel 32 or something, it is the same. When you declare a DLL import unit, you define this is a unit, this is a external, blah, blah. The same in Pascal to JS, but you are not binding to the DLL, clearly, but to an object that will be available at the runtime. But it is statically tied. Hmm? For instance, an import unit for jQuery is available, which is called, uh, there is a unit named libjQuery to do that. What about the bugging? The generated JavaScript source code is visible and debuggable in the browser. The first time I saw it, I was having a heart attack to see Pascal in the development tools in the Chrome. Moreover, the transpiler can generate a source map, which means that you will be able to see and debug a Pascal code directly in the browser. What about IDE support? Lazarus offers support for Pascal to JS, uh, allows to write code and compile code. And TMS WebCore, which is a commercial product based on Pascal to JS, offers a richer integration with Pascal to JS using Delphi VS Code as editor. Moreover, TMS WebCore offers a sort of VCL equivalent set of controls ready to be used in your web client. There is also an architecture which mimics the T data set. Uh, architecture to talk with the backend services. Let's see fastly some demo. Here we have a um, server which can provide uh, this folder as a web, as a NIST web folder. And then this is my Pascal application, which can be transpiled to JavaScript. As you can see, there is the application initialize run. Then in the do run, it is more or less the window.load event. If you ever done some JavaScript development, you know that at the startup, when the document is ready, you have to binding events, something to just make the UI live to just to give life to the UI. And this is the same mechanism. If you see, more or less, you can see, right? the, here the code, apart from the syntax, it is just what you normally do in uh, plain JavaScript code. Get HTML element, element, you can cast it, read and then you can bind it to the property, uh, you can bind the events on click here. You have the event no. You have the event here, the on click, which is binded to an anonymous method. And here I have the button prime number, which is binded to the on click, something I can call this is prime. This is prime is declaring another unit, which calculates if a number is prime or not, blah, 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 blah. Normal Pascal code, apart from the binding stuff. Hmm? Then you can build it and uh, Lazarus talk with PassJS and creates this app.js. This app.js, it is just JavaScript with your code. If you try to look for is prime, that's it. This is our code, which raises also exceptions, translated to JavaScript. Then you have here the map file, which allows to be this. Hello world, because the tradition is important. 
Hmm? And then put a number here, is a prime number. What about the bugging? F12, sources, client sources, RPR, which is the DPR for Free Pascal, and you have your code. You can put a, uh, a breakpoint here, is prime number, breakpoint, step over, step into, step over, over. What about num? Great, it's 13. And here you have the local with your variable, the global stack. That's it. JavaScript. How you would use JavaScript, but this is Pascal. Hmm? So it is running JavaScript compiled from a Pascal source code, and you can debug using the map file, you can debug the, um, the Pascal source code. Today, about the backend, Pascal on the backend. In a web API world, the language on the backend is a detail. Pascal is a perfect fit for developing backend. There are tons, really tons of great frameworks able to develop very good backends. Some frameworks for the backend development. We have the RAD server with yesterday be shown by Antonio which is included in Delphi, is commercial, but you can deliver some, uh, uh, some kind, of, you can deploy it, uh, uh, I think, one for one site customer for free if you have a uh, uh, Rad Studio architect or uh, enterprise. And uh, there is a web broker, which we, we doesn't have uh, royalties on the development. Uh, then there is Delphi MVC framework, also passed to JS for Node.js project. So, Pascal um, running on the Node.js environment, or DW script, or TMSX data, the Raja framework, uh, which is also for Delphi and the FPC, Brook framework, horse, others a lot. Okay? Let's see uh, an example of this one. I don't know because I picked this one. <laughs> as you see, as you can see, the uh, the the approach of the frameworks can be really different, really. Some are more Delphi-oriented, component-based, some are more uh, code-based. Uh, in this case, we have an open source uh, uh, license. The, uh, the project is designed around the popular concept of controller action and middlewares or filter approach, as in Java, Node.js, PHP, modern frameworks, C Sharp, Web API. All of them has this approach, it's controller, action, filters, and, uh, uh, or middleware, they, they called uh, in the same way. Uh, it's been used by banks, hospital factories, ERP, but also in medium and small companies for 30 years so far. It is really uh, restful. It reached the level three of the Richardson maturity model, uh, which is a way to measure how uh, a system is really restful, and this is the max level. It supports REST and JSON RPC. There are all 40 contributors from all over the world. I have samples, documentation. So the question is, the, 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 um, the reason to, to talk about this is just to say that in the, the backend, you have a lot of stuff, really good craft. So you can uh, confident develop for the backend using uh, Pascal technology, using one of these framework. Hmm? About the future, this is highly opinionated section. So you can be, you can agree with me or not, no problem, we are just talking. If today JavaScript is the assembly for the browser, why don't use a real assembly? Which is compiled, safe, binary, fast, without the slowness of the interpreter. WebAssembly. WebAssembly uh, is a binary instruction format for a stack-based virtual machine. And is designed as a portable compilation target for programming languages, enabling deployment on the web for client and the server application. But we 
Well, that for the back end is not a big problem because any languages can be used to create an API. Hmm? So the real utilization of WebAssembly web is mostly on the browser. Hmm? Uh, do you see WASM? Why? Because it is efficient and fast, because it executes native speed, real native speed, is decoded much faster than JavaScript can be parsed. We are talking about more or less 20 times faster. It is safe because it's unboxed, how something that runs on your browser should be, hmm? and is designed in the spirit of the web. So it is versionless, it's backward compatible, it's forgetting about uh, some error about the, 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 the environment. It just executed, okay? Hmm? So it's, it's backward compatible. WASM would be nothing if uh, there isn't uh, a system interface to the system. WASI, which stands for WebAssembly System Interface, is an API that provides access to several operating system-like features, including files, file systems, sockets, clocks, random numbers, and so on. So the WASI, WASI, extends WebAssembly, WebAssembly characteristics and boxing, plugging the power of access, the I.O. interface. Hmm? And it is designed to be independent for, uh, of the browser, so it doesn't depend on the web APIs or JavaScript, and it isn't limited uh, by the need of the compatible com to be compatible with JavaScript. So YSI, YASI will bring WASP everywhere. So you have, this is one of the approach, you have the user application, which can use uh, with all the WASI lib, all the stuff that is provided by WASI, with different implementation for the host application, whatever, or native OS, or bare metal, or some kind of polyfill for the browser, for the other system. And what is this abstraction layer, which says, this is your file system. What's the name of the main unit? Ah, you should not know about it. This is the file system for you. That's it. Do you need a socket? This is a socket? How uh, can I? No, you cannot. This is a code socket. That's it. Hmm? Let me uh, extend this thinking. Could we think to WASP and YASI as Docker for the UI? Why not? You have sandboxed I.O. It is independent from the language. It is self-contained and runs in every proper container. It's a container with UI. Which kind of revolution could be? Huh? Is was trying to replace JavaScript? No. WebAssembly is designed to be a complement to JavaScript, not to replacement of JavaScript. And uh, it is expected that JavaScript and WebAssembly will be used together in a number of configurations. Uh, for example, uh, compiled apps that leverage JavaScript to glue things together, just like you can do with, uh, uh, for example, with Python for Delphi, where you can write your application in Python and use Delphi to do the hard things. Or uh, uh, you can create your UI in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then you have for some kind of specific uh, processing uh, hard things in WebAssembly. Hmm? Or you can just use WebAssembly um, uh, as a library. Just you can, you have an application with JavaScript and just use WebAssembly because you have the, 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 the binding for WebAssembly directly in the JavaScript engine. This is the proposal of the WebAssembly uh, committee that allows you to reuse WebAssembly uh, libraries ju just like you do today for JavaScript libraries. Use cases, uh, a lot, really a lot. Uh, you can do anything. You just think about gaming, 
or um, games or a peer to peer application or image video editing and music production directly in the browser. But it's not the stupid cuisine of the, uh, of the real one. It is the real one. Hmm? Or image recognition, um, uh, augmented reality, because you have a very low latency, because there is no JavaScript there. Or scientific visualization of virtual machines directly run in the browser. It is native speed. Or just full application. Hmm? Or just a remote desktop or VPN, encryption, anything. Or example, fat client for enterprise application. Because if a WebAssembly can create a socket, sky's the limit. Hmm? Outside the browser, check the, the length of the list. Hmm? Game distribution service, because you can just run WebAssembly everywhere. Hmm? Or server-side computer of untrusted code. Or server-side application, clearly. Or hybrid native apps on mobile devices. Uh, how Wasm can be used, for example, entire code base in Asset WebAssembly, or the mainframe in WebAssembly, and you can put some JavaScript here and there. So, in the backend, Pascal is strong. It's productive, fast, compact and type safe. How to be stronger? We have to be always improved. Highly manipulated. Improve the language itself. Learn from the others. More literal, literal types, syntactic sugar, built-in data structure, anonymous classes, string templating, REST operators. Proper async await support. This is really important. As in can wait, as in can wait. Any other language, no, any no, but a lot of languages used for the web backend development has this kind of support. And Pascal 2JS has something about it. Then, uh, about the binding, we have uh, IOCP, HTTP.C, Sleep Event, IO, etc. The question, the, the, the um, the topic here is to embrace OS libraries and mechanisms to provide even more speed, allowing a bigger number of connections. So one connection, one thread is no more enough. Front-end. Pascal is good. Good job by commercial vendors and open source community, really. The current efforts are aimed to allow us to write web application to Pascal developers, and that's something that I really love, but would be great if we could provide also the other way around. Leverage the Pascal strength to attract web developers used to React, Angular, Vue, Svelte, and so on, to use Pascal. Then, the framework's problem. Transpilers are great, really. However, Real applications are composed today by frameworks. Especially on the client side, frameworks and libraries are the real problem. We have to learn from TypeScript. Nullables, optional types, structural compatibility, and so on. Having the same language, but not the same framework web developers are used to, lowers the benefit of the transpilation effort. We do a lot of work to get the same developers, which is good. It's a good first step, hmm? but it's a first step. If you want to attract new users which don't come from the Pascal world, in, in my honest opinion, we have to support JavaScript framework and TypeScript as TypeScript does. So React 3S, Angular, Vue, Velt, and so on. Conclusion. When the web was calling, Pascal was there, sometimes not strong as we did would be, sometimes stronger than expected. There is no silver bullet with Pascal, but uh, there is no silver bullet, but Pascal is very well suited for backend development and offers interesting approaches for the client side web development. Feel free and confident to develop your next web project in Pascal. Thank you.
you. Tech and Power uh, tests concerning, uh, concerning speed about uh, 300 uh, frameworks from different languages. Uh, have you ever considered to include, uh, to, to, to be there also as a framework? There is another framework also in Pascal, more fast than .NET for the moment, that you did not mention in your list. My fault, there are really a lot. <laughs> Yes. There is an other. Have you ever considered to, to participate? In developing on that framework? No. In uh, having uh, DMVC in uh, the benchmarks that uh, 300 other uh, frameworks are competitive, uh, are compared for uh, speed. It's not a problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Phil.